Hi, and welcome in. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, I'm Jason. I'm George. And this is Velvet Games. Uh, so today we're going to be having sort of a uh, talk show kind of vibe to it. I'm going to be talking with uh, George here. We we both have DM'd not only outside of the channel, but especially inside the channel. You've seen me DMing the D&D &D experiences and George with the Fallout experiences. So we're going to kind of dive into the tabletop aspect of today and just kind of talk about it a little bit. How are you doing today, George? Um, I'm doing pretty good. Awesome. Um, well... I, uh, I want to pick your brain a little bit about something. Okay, there's not much there, so be warned. Trust me, I know. There's it's a lot okay. of water. Oh. Yeah. At least that's what my wife tells me. Oh. My wife tells me something <laughs> completely different. <laughs> she tells me completely different. Anyway, um, let's start with a simple question. What's your favorite class in D&D? Uh, rogue. Why? I, so, I just love the versatility of it. I have so many skills that I'm allowed to um put proficiencies in be able to use um i also just love the uh sneak gameplay um when i play video games and whatnot generally i play two different combat styles one of them primarily which is my main style is i like to sneak in do things that way but there's no in between either i do that or i'm going guns blazing so when i play D D and i play as a rogue um if I can just avoid either avoid combat or avoid even getting hurt in the first place, that's why I love playing rogue. Now, I know with like a lot of people, they equate rogue rogues to like edginess, right? Like you yeah. have to play the edgy rogue that my family left me behind and I'll never go back. And now I sit in the shadows waiting with my bow. Like, yeah, I don't see you playing those edgy bows, uh, edgy rogues, though. I see you I don't like you play a rogue. <laughs> But like you utilize the rogue more as like, I have to do this. Yeah, either that or it just depends on uh, especially alignment, because mm -hmm. if I'm playing more good aligned, generally, I want to have uh, a backstory that makes sense for me to be good aligned. If I'm like playing a chaotic neutral, which is probably the most stereotypical rogue, sure. which is what most people see. Then yeah, I'm my family's dead, all this type of stuff, and then um, I just do whatever the heck I want, and Straight to uh, I just boy. sit there and brood. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I'd rather make something a little more interesting um, instead of making something that seems so generic and or um, very uh, common, I guess, or gotcha. stereotypical. Stereotypical rogue, yeah. Yeah. I get that. It's like the bards, stereotypical bard. True. <laughs> See, that's the thing. I don't I like I I would say my favorite class is a wizard because of how much I can do with the wizard. Um but one of my favorite classes to play was the ranger that I mm -hmm. made the Drake Warden especially. Yeah, and I that was pretty crazy. I know it's newer too. And being able to like summon a dragon and be like, this is my friend. And then we just run. And then eventually <laughs> yeah, I would scare all the civilians away. Yeah. But uh, I really like Artificer too. That's where I'm stuck. I, I look at that as your favorite class. I, I just break Pretty it. much anything that has magic is like your favorite class. Right. Or more specifically, full casters yeah. are generally where your go to. Well, like, okay, with a wizard, right? Mm -hmm. That's a full caster that you're just, you're you have to rely on magic because you have no martial abilities. Yes. So like I'm casting fireball, I'm casting haste, I'm getting out of there. Mm -hmm. But like I built tons of blade singing wizards too. Yeah. That they're like, oh, you want to train for years? Ha ha. See? Here we go. And then just <laughs> goes at yeah. it. And so like it's all, I think it, it and really. I'm the opposite. Right. I play primarily marshals. And then if I do anything with magic, it's a half caster, like a paladin or a warlock. Yeah. <laughs> or even, I, I still need to do a bard. That would be a lot of fun. I'm saying we just so. get the, get the whole crew together and we all play as bards. <laughs> but that sounds really dangerous for whoever's DMing that campaign. But here's the twist, right? <laughs> We're actually a mariachi band. <laughs> so one of us plays the trumpet one of us plays the guitar oh my gosh someone has to play what are those little things that uh, the uh, the maracas maracas yeah. right i don't know what actually goes into a mariachi band <laughs> but that's what Who i imagine in my, exactly 
Just but run out there, just do your thing. We we could call ourselves like depending on how many people we dude. Imagine six people, right? In the Los campaign. tres amigos. <laughs> Los tres amigos. <laughs> I was thinking um uh ses amigos. Seis amigos. Seis amigos. Or we could like have a really dark name. What do you remember? Um uh you watch Fairy Tale, right? The anime? Oh yeah, yeah. Do you remember a ratio on seis? I always thought mm. that was the dumbest like name because it was just like six evil or something like that like what it translates to um it's it's i'm trying to remember which who was that it's the six people with like different so they had like the dude with the cobra who actually, oh never mind i remember who you're talking about now yeah yeah so the ratio describe it a bit. i want to say it's the ratio six i think it is but i don't remember it's been a while yeah um catch up on your fairy tale guys we, we, <laughs> we need to um but uh but yeah like I, something like that where it's sinister but we just show up and like actually i would love to make a super gritty realism campaign and then throw bars <laughs> have let's, everybody his bars or something let's dive into that a little super bit. serious campaign yeah like <laughs> the people at home it's like self-insert characters for like video games like right. the cut scenes oh god <laughs> your character is just like completely just vomit of colors yeah <laughs> or what you dressed as completely like it from penny or pennywise from it <laughs> exactly and, that's and what i imagine us doing inside of that campaign i love those cutscenes too when it's cinematically like something <laughs> excellent and it just pans over and just like hello <laughs> yes like i the mods with that too especially like skyrim and oh everything. my gosh uh, <laughs> i played i played a skyrim mod and we'll get back to the original topic eventually. <laughs> um i played a skyrim mod where i was actually blues clues oh no and every dragon i left left a paw print oh my gosh <laughs> so i just the imagine stuff people create i just imagine somebody like went through yeah, this their, is a great idea yeah <laughs> Yeah, or this was all like a dream that Whoever I Whoever made this, yes, we still love you. We're just very confused as to your thought process. <laughs> it's either I played it and I enjoyed that so thoroughly that I remember that, or it was a completely like fever dream that I had one time. If it doesn't exist, make it. Somebody oh out there, because that'd be great. Um, So back to D&D, &D, right? Because oh everything, like everything you can relate to, like fantasy wise, you can do in D&D. &D. Yes. But um, back to, I don't know what we were talking about, but I'll try uh, to Last I remember was favorite class. Favorite class, right? But um, let's get to a jump set here. You guys are talking about gritty realism. Gritty realism, perfect. Um, but you mentioned you're doing gritty realism into bards, right? <laughs> yeah. And so like people at home may not know what gritty realism. Do you mind like explaining that a little bit? Like, um, your take on it? So the um, dungeon master guideline actually has a um thing in there for you to do gritty realism as an option mm -hmm. um it essentially makes the game just a little bit more difficult um so for example instead of normal D, &D like you sleep eight hours and then all of a sudden all of your fatal wounds are healed um while in gritty realism it takes a week um so it's just a little bit more of a realistic take it also um generally there's a huge debate between marshals and casters that casters are super overpowered mm -hmm. it helps it a little bit by the fact that you have to pay attention to your spell slots over like a week period because that's a long rest now yeah um so it just makes the game a little bit more difficult um essentially and then if especially if you do like homebrew rules then uh it makes the game just very interesting i personally love it just due to it being more rewarding it makes right. you actually think about your actions instead of just like oh i just do this and i just sleep it off and i'm okay right um when realistically it's like oh yeah uh in a couple days they come over like the bandit group that you yeah. guys messed with oh yeah you guys aren't healed yet yeah. they come over to your village and assault it's right. like it makes more sense now i know with your gritty realism there's a lot of different homebrew aspects which, yeah which was for me very entertaining mm -hmm. because i'm i like to craft no matter what it is whether i'm an yeah. artificer or wizard i like to build things and one homebrew that you put in there was like it takes not only time and skill but money 
mm-hmm. as and as well uh, like you uh have to take this time and dedicate it so if i want to build yes. a, a set of armor you would like pull out this piece of paper and be like okay you're level 12 you want to build this you have this material yep. you have this person it's going to take you 40 days i'm like 40 days yep um or like a gundam i i built <laughs> that ridiculousness yes like, <clears throat> building that in 40 days i was like okay that seems to make sense right because i'm building a giant suit of armor with giant weapons mm-hmm. and- so <clears throat> what i actually did was i went off the dungeon master guideline again or whatever you want to call it mm-hmm. um and there's something in there for crafting magical items so i pulled off of that um decrease the time it would take because um i still want to give you guys downtime but not like oh yeah you guys have like three months just to do whatever sure um so give you guys a decent bit of downtime in between stuff Mm. um so that way you are able to just be creative um so i essentially made a system that you can create literally anything that you want as long as you put in the research, you put in the time, and you put in the money, right. you are able to do it, including custom magical items and also custom weaponry and armor. Right. Which is, um, which again helps out uh, just to make the game a lot more interesting mm-hmm. because you can do a lot different builds. Like, for example, one of the things I have is for Mithril. Mm-hmm. It reduces the the weight, you know, of armor and weapons. So lightening it. Yeah. So I made it like, you know, you're wearing medium armor. It's now essentially light armor, allowing, let's say, for example, a rogue that uses light armor to actually be more tanky if they choose to be mm-hmm. by going and getting mithril or just that's just an example, which is awesome. Yeah, it just allows you to do whatever you want. So you it's not you're not no longer bound to your class. Right. to do stuff if i wanted to be a rogue and i wanted to build myself uh earn the feats and earn the skills to go and be more tanky then why not right and i, so. I one thing i love about our group our friend group especially is like we all between you myself and jt like we've all like dm'd different aspects of games and we all mm. dm differently too <laughs> yes like i just like okay yeah you want to try and blow up the world let's go let's <laughs> just make it make sense like if mm-hmm. you can role play it out and you say oh yeah i cast fireball but i do this and that and i put it between the magnifying glass and the sun and it makes because like things with magic don't necessarily have to make a hundred percent sense because yeah. it's magic like if you can explain how magic and D works to me and like how you want to make it work works for me yeah like there's people that are getting magic from the deities they worship there's people that are getting magic through studying there's people just born with it like sorcerers it's like yeah my great grandfather was a dragon it's like wait a second (laughs) yeah you're related to a bard and (laughs) and so like there's that that digress of like magic could come from anywhere so who am i as and like as a dm yes you have ultimate cosmic power and all that but Mm -hmm. you have to take what the player wants to do in my opinion and mm-hmm. filter that through like okay that makes sense sure you cast fireball but you are able to do this with that you know mm-hmm. and they have feats and they make broken characters so what i just make a broken campaign but ultimately i like the free world i like mm-hmm. sandboxy here you go do what you want and there's certain aspects of like that i'm learning now as and that's a like I'm going on a bunch of tangent guys. I'm sorry. We'll get back to it. I promise. But that's one thing I love about sandboxy aspects is that you can just do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. And like, sure. As, as I DM and as I grow as a DM, because every time you get behind the screen and host it, you learn more and more and you can run. I've ran the same campaign with tens, like almost Actually, probably about 50 different people in different play, play groups now that I've built this custom campaign. And if you guys are listening to this, you could check out the campaign Trouble in Uladar. That's the campaign that I built. And people have tried it every different way. But like everybody, everyone that's ever started that campaign, the first part where the first episode where you guys are like in the tavern, right? And yeah. you have the freedom fighter 
And you're like, <laughs> you see him slap the girl because he always slaps the girl. That's part of it. That's the beginning. Everybody always like, well, now I have to kill him. Straight up <laughs> fight the dude. Nobody has ever walked over and go, hey, dude, why the heck did you do that? And just try and talk it out. Nobody's ever done that. In fact, I remember. I mean, I wasn't intent. Of, OK, I wasn't wanting to kill him at first until he pulled out a mace. And I'm like, OK, I guess we're fighting now. To be fair, you <laughs> broke a glass over his head. I'd pull out a weapon, too. Yeah, good point. Yeah. But nobody's ever walked up. And I have this whole decision tree in my DM notes of like, OK, if they do this, they do there and do this. And it, it just expands to like now they have the whole world open and then you just improv a little bit and then you bring it back to okay here's the storyline but here's all this other stuff that you can do mm -hmm. and that's the way i like to dm but and i know you you have a similar kind of style yeah but in your own way could you explain like to the viewers like how you dm so generally um since we do do a lot of homebrew um i pretty much just made a um a paper just going in, essentially adding to, not necessarily adding, I don't, yeah, let's say adding to the rules that we have. Sure. Just allowing you to be able to use that system to do whatever you want. Yeah. Um, I also create sandbox worlds, um, but with the, the storyline, I also do somewhat similar to you. Mm. It's just, uh, I just let the players kind of, do what they want so generally i have a good line path more in the middle and then more towards the evil mm. and then they kind of converge onto something that all of them would end up dealing with at some point so then everything that's in between that i just put um little stuff here and there that then makes sense and makes it fun for the players for them um once they do reach that big encounter right um because evil characters will also still kill evil people yeah. it's just uh, they have to put them in the right situation if you're going and saying that you're going to go and destroy the world and you have you literally are not giving any other option than to destroy the world the evil characters will probably want to destroy this evil guy because they want to still live inside of the world that they're inside of no exactly um Unless for some reason that's part of their goal as well, but at that point they're they're gonna destroy themselves by doing that. So, right. but at the same time too, that's your own choice. So yeah, and I know when JT he did the um, pirates campaign that he did, and he made mm -hmm. all that the stats, the stuff, um, and like his his style is similar to ours, where it's mm -hmm. like yeah, do what you want, but it has to make perfect sense like you have to explain mm -hmm. it to a detail and so mm -hmm. guys he tried to cheat me all right i'm gonna be honest <laughs> with you. he tried to cheat me out of winning this campaign and yes i know like D, D is a story like you're supposed to tell stories with your friends as a dm you're kind of navigating that story but he tried to cheat me and here's why he's like no magic magic doesn't exist guys and i was like <laughs> okay cool and then he gave he made up these old classes he brilliant mind and he's like mm -hmm. inventor which is an artificer, guys, without magic. But pretty much. And as we know, I love artificer. Yes. So I was an inventor. And the first thing I did was make a chainsaw sword. Because that makes sense. <laughs> and then totally. I then attached a like a wire and a rope to it to make that chainsaw th sword throwable and then wind it back and, and so on. So like because I was an inventor, you got this like skill that you can try and invent stuff and you would roll a d20 to expand and use that skill to invent uh custom items and he made this whole system by himself it's really awesome maybe one day we'll put we'll do it on the channel and you know put the pages out there for you guys as well but um if you guys want to let us know in the comments but um he tried to cheat me and here's how i had the whole world set up to my hands i had a blimp i had orbital missiles pretty much i was ready to rock and i just i literally just destroyed a prison by the way <laughs> that i broke you out of and i broke out of yes um <laughs> but i destroyed a prison and then we somehow got encountered with davy jones right magic oh yeah. yeah magic doesn't exist in this world all right somehow davy jones teleports behind me in the air <laughs> in my blimp Ridiculous. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe one day we'll get in, we'll, we'll run the channel, run it back. 
we'll have like the dm aspect of it i don't know i would like to do it in the future but mm -hmm. back to things that we're not salty about um oh my gosh uh, um when it comes to dming what do you think like a challenge you see as yourself what is a challenge that you have as a dm okay um so since i have the the homebrew rules and whatnot generally allow so allowing players to be able to go and do whatever they want is the easy part for me now mm. now the problem is is making encounters that are not too uh, ridiculous mm. so when i make encounters especially since i generally do gritty realism campaigns they are on the more difficult side but i try to make sure i have multiple avenues for you to be able to take that is, is also if you put a bunch of creativity in there that you will succeed inside of that encounter sure um so i will throw encounters that will be very difficult for your party but if you either pre-prepared or you got an information or you just did something super creative mm -hmm. there should be no reason for you to not beat that encounter so um it's just making sure that i don't make an encounter too hard and i make sure i have enough avenues for you to take that are um reasonable yeah for you to go and uh do because everybody thinks differently so if you make like one way and you're like oh yeah this will be super easy for them to figure out that 99 of the time they're not going to use that way so just expect that so yeah. instead you make multiple ways right and then make it a little bit more generic <laughs> So that way your players can think outside of their their box, not mm. your box, their box. Yeah. So that way they can figure out this interesting puzzle that you made and solve it. Sure. Or so. I mm. uh, blow it up. Yeah. Because uh, that usually happens. <laughs> what was it? The last game? I was the Drake Warden and my son came back to like at the end. Weird. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah um jt was playing originally at the start of the campaign as your son yeah, yeah you your flaw was that you hated orcs yep i purposefully had a um quest that had orcs in it and i was hoping that you're like oh yeah yeah so part of your flaw yes you're probably going to take it but be smart about it <laughs> instead he decided to go straight to where the orc encampment was so this, by the way, these are three level one characters versus three orcs, okay? His son <laughs> got immediately decapitated. <laughs> um, Austin went and got, um, started bleeding out on the ground. And Jason, literally, I have no idea how you still survived that encounter. You were so lucky. The, that orc that was right on top of you kept on rolling like twos and threes. Otherwise, you would have also been dead, and then all of you would have had to create new characters. Yeah, I knew I couldn't so. get away from him and just keep running. Yeah, I there's out. no way. So I had to run, and then shoot, and then run, and then shoot, and then, and eventually it wore... Because orcs don't have a whole lot of HP. No. They, they're just built different, you know? They're, like, ready they're to hit. They're fast, and they hit hard. Exactly. So I was like, okay, and I was kind of metagaming. I don't, I don't usually encourage it, but I'd be because I know what I know, it's hard for me not to sometimes. And I mean, it made sense for your character that you, if you're a ranger that hated yeah. orcs, so you I focused. knew a lot about orcs too. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, I didn't say anything against you for it because right. of that. Yeah. And that's, so it just made sense. That's why I like rangers too. Like <laughs> they get they, targeted racism. They get, it is targeted racism. <laughs> and those trying to get me in the comments are at home. <laughs> The flaw was I hated orcs because they killed my whole family. Okay. It wasn't just like I woke up and I was like, orcs. <laughs> no, like I, I, like I built a whole backstory for Drake Farmel. That was his name. Yes. And like, I, cause he was a Drake warden and it was cool. And I've always liked the name Drake, but, um, now like, I'm going to search up what, uh, JT's character's name was. Yeah. I know I still have it in here. <laughs> and then, um, like Drake Formel, he had a family, he had a wife and kids, and then an orcs came in and raided the village and they killed his family. And that's what made him start to go off into the wilderness and try and survive on his own. I built this whole backstory. 
Mm-hmm. And then the first thing George introduces us to is, yeah, there's some orcs. I'm like, kill them. Let's get rid of them uh, right now. Boom, I found it. What was it? Vaymor Farmel. Vaymor. Yeah. So, so back to what we were talking about originally, right? Yeah. So at the end of this campaign, we're about to go and like fight this like huge army. Mm-hmm. And Vaymor stops us at the entrance of this cavern, right? Mm-hmm. And he's like, he's like cur- cursing me out as his dad. Like you left me to die, all this stuff. Yeah. And like, I'm, I remember you telling me afterwards, like, yeah, you could have handled it peacefully. Like you could have told yes. him, but he I would have joined you. Yeah. And I was like, nah. And so before, <laughs> before we went, yes, this man is terrible, by I, the way, had no care for his adopted son. <laughs> you know what they say about adoption. No, my kidding. goodness. Um, no, just kidding. Um, terrible. But like, I don't remember exactly how I set it up, but I had orbital missiles. It was like, oh, oh I know yeah, it yeah. It was from <laughs> Tarask, bo- like killing Tarask and grabbing their chopping up their corpses and using their bits because they don't break yeah uh, to, to launch it from so yeah. what it was was a bag of holding yes and my my dragon my drake mm-hmm. would fly to the highest altitude possible and then i i put like cuz gunpowder existed in the game yes and, i had guns in the game and so i made this like huge basically imagine like a shotgun shell but out of Tarask bone. And yeah. the all the Drake would have to do is drop it from a huge height and then just level a whole and like I blew up a lot of things in that campaign. Yes. Yes. A he lot did. of things. Uh, I know you guys haven't witnessed me as a DD player on the channel. <laughs> maybe it maybe when this video goes out you another do another reason why I went to cogent roleplay. Yeah. <laughs> You make it so hard for me to make good encounters. I had to make this entire encounter underground with a 10th level spell <laughs> for it to have like a force field around the island so you couldn't bombard I, it. And I will say, I will say <laughs> in my defense, right? I don't approach every situation the same. Yeah. I do I do try and talk my way out when I need to. And I do well, try you and did during that last encounter. Right. And just to highlight, um, I we went down there, there was too many people for me to fight. I said, I said, hey, give me, give me your top general. I'll one on one them. If I win, like we call it and like we don't I don't have to fight each one of you. And then you're like, that's not going to fly. And I rolled like horribly, horribly for persuasion. And so then mm-hmm. I then I was like, OK. And I had a lot of charisma, too. Like I oh, was yeah. ready to go. So I was like, OK, how do I do this? How do I get out of the situation? And so I was like, wait a second. I just have to threaten them with the force that I have. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I I think I leveraged my situation of like my merchants because I had a whole like set up with like um, um, sailing merchants. and I had tons of money and like I had a, a ton of influence. And I told him, I was like, listen, you guys are here to take over the world. You guys are going to have to fight me to do that. You guys don't want to lose all these people. I will kill everybody because I will get out of here. And I bluffed. I bluffed my way out of that. So... What actually happened was that you convinced them to go destroy other worlds instead of that one. Right. So, um, as a lot of people know about D&D is that um, you can plane shift to other worlds. Yeah. Technically, you can do that as long as your DM allows you to do that. Because obviously, you have to create a lot of content to be able to do that. Right. Um, So, these enemies were plane shifting to different worlds purposely destroying those worlds not trying to take over but destroy them right and um they were here at this one um which is a huge undead army they just keep resurrecting themselves essentially um so jason decides to convince the generals like hey um (laughs) i think you said you were to help I told him I have the influence to because I know Austin did. Yeah, I told he him joined. <laughs> I told him I have the influence to run this world right now, mm-hmm. and I will take over this world. But if mm-hmm. if you guys are trying to destroy it, that's going to be a lot of damage to try and do. When I'll just I'll take care of this world. 
mm-hmm. rather than try and fight me and try and fight have this whole fight because yes yes i i i was like okay i will bring you outside of this cavern and you will lose this fight <laughs> yes so like we could do this the easy way or the hard way kind of vibe mm-hmm. and they're like okay and i rolled high i rolled i think it was like i rolled in 19 and then plus like 10 or something it was really stupid high it was really high and then they were like all right well we'll let you handle this world and then my i had a, a goddess that was like i was working under too right like, yeah um, it was scotty scotty i was using the norse pantheon that's right and so um my whole thing was like plant trees everywhere because i blew <laughs> yeah that was dumb because i blew up cities <laughs> you, what was it multi-class into warlock so you had to find a way to make a pact with like somebody and you decided to contact her yeah <laughs> The yeah, thing, yeah, and I, I multi-class as a warlock. I was a warlock ranger because I wanted a little bit more casting. Yes. Yeah, and and so I yeah. also wanted to summon because I kept. Here's the thing, guys. Um, somehow in every campaign, <laughs> I play in, I end up in jail. Yes. Um, you do this to yourself. To be fair, I don't always end up in jail because <laughs> I, because I do something illegal. It's sometimes. Really? It's not always. It's not always. That's that. a lie. It's not always. That's a that. lie, everybody. No, 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 no. It's not always. The Geneva Convention. Luckily, they don't exist inside of these campaigns so when it's Jason not plays. It's not legal. <laughs> it's not legal if rules oh, don't look, exist. Oh look, Orc City. Let's nuke it. <laughs> if laws don't exist, it doesn't make it illegal. Oh my gosh. Like if people there's... are still going to try to get you. I know, but I'm, that's what I'm saying. There's a whole, and I didn't blow. They up the will board. make laws just. To imprison you. To be fair, specifically, I didn't actually, I didn't <laughs> actually even it. blow up that orc city. I didn't blow it up. You basically I, did. I enslaved them all. <laughs> That's worse. <laughs> I'm, if there's not a law against it, it's not illegal. Anyway. Oh my gosh. I enslaved them all. Oh my. Gosh. And they worked for me. And later on, I slowly replaced them with human, like, I slowly replaced myself with other people that were, like, my ambassadors. And that was a major part of my trade city. Yeah, and then you reduced your hate for orcs slightly less because you started, like, tolerating them living. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So They killed my whole family. Technically, it was character development yeah, sure. in a really, really, really messed up way. <laughs> I never said D&D was clean. <laughs> Especially when you play. I never said my character was cut, clean cut. Like, Oh, no. But I build these in-depth Didn't characters. did you attack Austin like right at the beginning of the game? It, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was his fault, but... 100% his fault. Because I literally... <laughs> before we started, I told him, Hey, listen, are you going to start as us knowing you or on your own? And he goes, on my own. Okay. okay. Hey, dude, I'm a ranger that has trust issues. And you're approaching me and my son that we're out here hunting. An Oathbreaker Paladin, by the way. And he's in full armor. Yes. And so I'm like, hey, dude. In the middle of the desert. Yeah, who are you? (laughs) He's like, don't worry about it. I'm like, what? Yeah, Uh, that was really dumb. (laughs) No, I'm going to worry about it. Yes. You could potentially kill me. I'm going to worry about it. Yes, and a heavily armed man just walks up to a random person just says, sup. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not going to just sit by and be like, well, that seems normal. Do, do, do. Yeah, do. exactly. I'm like, no, it's just like it's. Yeah. And so, yeah, I attacked him because it made sense for my character <laughs> to attack him. Yes. And so, like, he got salty. I remember he got salty about that, too. Yes. Um, The day after. That was his own fault, though. Yeah. Like, I, I literally, think... he was being the most suspicious person ever. It's just like. Hey, don't follow us. Okay. Start walking away. Waits like a couple seconds, just starts following. It's yeah. like, dude, why are you behind us right now? Oh, I just following you guys. We literally just told you to stop following us. Why yeah. are you following us? Oh, no reason. It could have all yeah, been avoided. Okay. <laughs> it could have it all been avoided too. Friend or foe? Okay. All the red flags are right. pointing towards foe. His this man is not okay. <laughs> His character was a giant red flag. That's what yes. it was. Yes, a hundred percent. I well, mean, don't get me wrong. He was a neutral evil. So yes, red flags all around. But he did not help himself. Yeah. Well, I think I feel like we covered a lot. Um, yeah. And we appreciate you guys watching. We're gonna. Um, what I want to do when we end these, we're doing a kind of a personal lightning round, so that way everybody at home 
can kind of know it. And then what I'll do is I'll ask you a question and you just answer. And then I'll answer this, the same question. We just kind of go through rapid fire at this point. All right. Okay. You locked in, ready to go. I'm ready. All right. <laughs> um, what's your favorite color? Blue. Silver. What's your favorite movie? Ooh, uh, one of the, uh, the first Avengers movie. Ooh, interesting. Uh, I am number four is my favorite movie. Uh, favorite oh, book. Wow. Yeah, I know people, people sleep on that movie. I think it's great. Ooh, I don't read much. Sorry guys. I'm just going to say uh player handbook. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. Um, <laughs> And tune in next time when we talk about why George hates D and D. My favorite book is the Percy Jackson books. I love oh those my books. Gosh. Um, wow, favorite food? Uh, monkey bread. Monkey bread. Oh, yeah. Showing some some of your Hispanic culture there. Uh, sure. Um, uh, favorite food is I love either like seafood Alfredo or like mm -hmm. seafood mac and cheese. Like I love cheesy seafood anyways um, i love monkey bread <laughs> <laughs> what's your favorite superhero uh superhero uh captain america dope um so mine's superboy and i like i i wear the superman shirts too because i like superman and i, I had the like superman wallet let me see if i can pull it out on camera superman wallet but like yeah. superboy is where where it's at because he has like tactical telekinesis there's a whole thing anyways um what's your favorite animal favorite animal dogs dogs <laughs> mine's an eagle i love like murka um murka all right beach or mountain mountain i would go i'm gonna go with beach uh time time machine or magic wand time uh, magic wand okay i'm gonna go with <laughs> i had to think about that one i'm gonna go with time machine uh cat through dogs Dogs. Dogs. Uh, <laughs> Imagine if I just said cats. Yeah, that'd be weird. <laughs> Winter or summer? Yes, the cats so they can feed my dogs. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and I'm the evil one. <laughs> this is this is the people. <laughs> gosh. Okay. Winter or summer? Winter. I don't yeah. like the heat. I'm going to go with winter, too. It, uh, romance or horror? Romance. Romance. Um, I don't, I'm not a huge horror buff. Yeah, me neither. Uh, ice cream or cake? Ice cream. Ice cream. All day. Breakfast or dinner? Breakfast. This is always tough for me. I'm going to go dinner. I can literally, I can skip dinner easily. But I can skip breakfast. breakfast is so hard for me. I can skip. I haven't had anything to eat today. Uh, like, I had a Rice Krispie treat. Ridiculous. Um. All right. Last, I would not be happy right now. Last question. <laughs> This might be a thinker. If you could have any superpower, what would it be and why? Super speed. Why? Um, so one of the things that in life as an adult, you realize that you wish you had more time to do stuff. And if I had super speed, I'd be able to get the stuff that I want to get done faster. Mm. Um, so that way then I can go to the stuff that I enjoy doing or spending time with the people that I actually want to be with, or, you know, just save gas. Cause I can just walk everywhere. <laughs> sure. Forget these gas prices y'all. Um, so yeah, that's my, my reasoning for that. I just, yeah. Okay. Now I wouldn't want to be using it all the time because I want to still enjoy the time where I'm at. Sure. But for things like that are super tedious, like. For example, working on my house, fixing stuff like I have to take it day by day and do it over weeks or months process for me to get stuff done. Yeah, because it just it takes time and time is a uh, luxury. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I get that. Um, so I don't know if this is when this episode is coming out, but I said mm -hmm. uh, we had the other guys here and I did uh, telekinesis and I really like mm -hmm. telekinesis, but I'm going to switch it up. I'm gonna say teleportation, similar, Ooh. similar to the gas thing, right? I would just beep bop anywhere, right? And like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go straight. Like, you seen the movie Jumper? I have not. Actually. Uh, so like, paraphrase, he has the ability to teleport. There's a bunch of people in the world that have the ability to teleport. He robs banks and he becomes like this in like international fugitive. And then there's this whole group that's set up in the government to hunt down these teleporters, jumpers, right? Okay. Uh, I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't rob banks. 
what I would do is um, I would go to different locations and like take pictures and do stuff like I would find my own way to like Spider-Man it like to mm -hmm. make a job out of my <clears throat> superpower and like <laughs> do stuff like that and then just teleport and be like boop 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 um, I'd also be the best ninja ever <laughs> to exist yeah that would be pretty um, scary like I, I imagine the CIA would have to hire me <laughs> be like hey dude you want to get into Doing like special forces or yeah, something. You want to get into Kazakhstan? We're there. Like done deal. Like I don't know if Kazakhstan's even a real world. <laughs> yeah. I'm not good at geography, guys. I make my own world. Me neither. <laughs> um but uh but yeah, like teleportation I feel and then like imagine like okay, then in these worlds that we have superpowers, uh -huh. I imagine that there's going to be people with other superpowers besides me that yeah. more than likely will use it for evil. Fighting somebody that can teleport is extremely difficult. Yeah, it's annoying. Right? Like, even if you have super speed, I just blink and... <laughs> just grab a shotgun and just teleport. Hasta yeah. la vista. I don't even have to do that. Like, I'll just wait for you to grab me, and then I'll just teleport us to, like, the middle of the ocean. Oh. Have fun with your super speed drowning. Boop. Done. Mm -hmm. Right. But... I'm gone. Swim up. Yeah. Yeah. And then now I have to figure out what in the world I am. Exactly. And then you have to figure out why am I in the middle of the Mariana Trench <laughs> while this dude is out like I'm out on the beach chilling, you know, like, dude, that sounds great. Yeah, that's what I would do. But uh, do they, I just sit there and wait for you to come back? No, I would never come back. <laughs> Every time I see you, like Let's have some margaritas. Then. Yeah, I would just be gone. I'd be at a different beach every time. Oh but uh well, that's what we're going to end the episode for today. Thank you guys for listening. Um, if you guys like stuff like this, leave it in the comments below and uh, have a good day. Time to put you back in jail. <laughs> hey, thank you for watching this video. If you want to see more and you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And if you really like the video, please hit the bell. If you want to hang out with more nerds just like us, check out the Discord. It's free. Also, be sure to check the description where we have links to our Patreon, where you can get access to all sorts of behind-the-scenes content and even prototype merch. And if you're still watching, thank you. You make stuff like this possible for all of us. Have a nice day. We'll hope to see you soon.